Hello everyone. Thanks to everyone for watching this video. My name is Qi Dao. I am an architect and engineer. Today's video is titled Barrel and Cross Vault, and it is going to introduce the membrane stresses in the vault. I am going to give you an overview of what I am covering today's video. First at all, it is a bit of background to the topic, and then focus on the barrel vault and the cross vault. The masonry barrel vault is the simplest form of a curved roof covering spaces with a rectangular plan. We have an ancient origin but began to be extensively built in the Roman and Romanesque architecture. Barrel vaults are generally seen cylindrical solids of a given profile supported at their boundaries. Cross vaults, also known as a double barrel or growing vault, are typical of the Middle Ages. The cross vault is supported on its four corners, the intersection of two equal, though not necessarily semicircular. Barrel vaults use the simplest cross vault with a square in plan. More in particular, if the intersecting barrel vaults are semicircular in profile, the resulting cross vault will have rounded lateral arches and semi elliptical diagonals. The barrel vault belongs to the family of cylindrical shells. A cylinder is a geometric solid generated by moving a straight line along a curve while maintaining it parallel to its original direction. For convenience, we shall assume that the generatrices are horizontal. All plan normal to the generatrices intersect the cylinder in identical curves which are called profiles. Let us consider an element as shown in these figures. The forces per unit length of section are Nx, N phi, the normal forces, and Nx phi equal to N phi x, the shearing forces. The load per unit area of the shear element is the weight g. The element of surface has area dx times ds, and the total load acting on the element is f times dx times ds. The components of the membrane forces acting on the element of the middle cylindrical surface of the vault. The equations of equilibrium in the three directions x, y, z are shown here. The force M phi is independent of X. Moreover, the internal equilibrium directly determines force M phi, which cannot depend on the boundary conditions of the vault. Owing to the profile curvature, force M phi balances the load component in the direction normal to the vault surface. When this normal becomes horizontal, M phi equal to zero. From the equations of equilibrium, we have the expressions of nx phi, m phi, and nx, where k is expressed here. These equations take on specific forms for the three profile cases considered. The profile equation can be expressed in terms of the change in its radius of curvature r with angle phi. The expression shows here, where ro is the radius of curvature of the profile at the crown. When n equal to 0, the equation r represents an arc of the circle. When n equal to 1, an arc of cycloid. When n equal to negative 3, an arc of a parabolic. And when n equal to negative 2, an arc of catenary. In this video, we will show the catenary profile and the circular profile. In the catenary case, the profile equation is expressed here. Then we substitute the R equation into M phi equation, so that we will have the M phi expression for the catenary profile. Then we can substitute R and M phi into K equation, and obtain K is equal to zero. The figure shows the barrel vault is uniformly supported on its lateral walls. The central section, defined by x equal to zero, belongs to a plane of symmetry and therefore nx phi equal to zero at depth. Transverse walls are present at the vault's end section, where the condition nx equal to zero holds. In the circular case, the profile equation is expressed here. Then we substitute the r equation into m phi equation, so that we will have the m phi expression for the circular profile. Then we can substitute r and m phi into k equation, and obtain k is equal to 2 times g times cosine phi. Thus, the other two force components, 
nx and nx phi are shown here. If the profile is a semicircular, at phi equal to 90 degree, we have m phi equal to zero. Therefore, the wall's weight cannot be supported by the lateral walls. Only shear forces nx phi equal to negative g times g times x act on these walls and increase linearly along the generates up to the value nx phi equal to negative 2 times g times l at the transverse end walls. Next, we will study the statics of cross volts. The study of the square in plan run cross volt of these figures provide information on the features of the membrane stress states occurring in cross volts under their dead loads. For sake of simplicity, we will make reference to a cross volt with square plane having semicircular directories of radius r. The volt is composed by four cylindrical webs intersecting each other along the diagonal growings. The local reference coordinates defined at each point of the web are the opposite side x, having the direction of the generatrices and the straight line phi tangent to the semicircular directories. Now consider this small element as contained within the web. The internal equilibrium directly determines force n phi, independent on the boundary conditions of the volt. The other forces, nx and nx phi, will obey the equations that define the equilibrium of the small cylindrical element of volt along the direction x. From the equations of equilibrium, we have the expressions of nx phi, n phi, and nx, where k is expressed here. Because the profile is a symmetry, the shear force nx phi cancels at x equal to zero, so that a phi is equal to zero. Take a phi into account together with k equation. So nx phi is negative two times g times x times psi phi. The sine arches are unable to sustain the force nx orthogonal to their plane, so that for x equal to r, nx equal to zero and b phi is equal to negative r times g times cosine phi. Therefore, we lastly obtain nx expression. We can see that the membrane solution is statically determinate, and it depends only on the unit weight and the dimensions of the shell. The hub stress resultant m phi at phi equal to zero, so that it has the value negative g times r. The only shell forces acting at the cut will be the uniform hub compression of value g times r per unit length. Before analyze this cross volt, it is necessary to calculate the surface areas of webs. This figure shows the cylindrical surface with semicircular directories of diameter 2 times r with a square plane generating as the web. We consider the generic web segment defined by its distance x of its end section from the axis y passing through the vertex O. Making reference to the half of the web segment, the surface element shows here. Due to the assumed square plane, the x equal to dy. After the mathematical derivations, we obtain the length of the arc sx equation. Now we can evaluate the current area ax of the surface of the half web as this expression. Therefore, the current area of the whole web segment of width x is shown here. If we consider the dependence on the angle phi, the current area of the whole web segment is expressed here. The surface areas of webs can be used to calculate the weights and the same choice of the webs. Now we can analyze the cross volt. This figure shows the side elevation of the cut volt and the horizontal force of total magnitude, 2 times g times r square can be seen acting at the level of b. Neglecting the weight of the ribs, the half volt has weight w equal to 2.28 times g times r square, acting at a distance 0.468 times r from the free edge. This vertical force must be resisted by an equal vertical force w acting at a. And for complete equilibrium, a horizontal force 2 times g times r square must act at a height edge below the top of the volt. Take moments at point D, then we can obtain edge equal to 0.534 times r. From where does this horizontal force arise? This figure shows two bays. It will be seen that 
there is no problem in the longitudinal direction. Each shell will lean against the next with required force. In order to stabilize the boat, an external force must be provided in the transverse direction. This force is the volt thrust, to be concentrated by the flying buttress. Ideally, the head of the flying buttress should lie about halfway between the spring and the crown of the boat. Now if the flying buttress applies a thrust at the level indicated in the two bays, the vaulting canoid must be made solid in order that the thrust can be transmitted to the shell. Thus, the canoid must be filled. For this purpose, at least to the level of the line of action of the volt thrust. From conclusions what we learned, a barrel vault is an architectural element formed by the extrusion of a single curve along a given distance. A cross vault is produced by the intersection at the right angles of two barrel vaults. In comparison with a barrel vault, a cross vault provides economies of material and labor. Okay, thanks to everyone for watching my video today, and I do hope you found the video informative, and that you learned some things from it. If you do have any questions, then you can write comments and messages. I am happy to answer any questions. Thanks for your watching.